here we see the lymph node but it doesn't look like a lymph node the overall architecture is effaced um, here we see the capsule however we do not recognize cortex with uh, um, lymphatic follicles with germinal centers we don't see medulla with medullary sinuses but we see these nodular structures and these nodules are encircled by fibrous bands made out of collagen so let's go a little bit closer to find out what are these nodules and here we can see these multiple atypical large cells with round or ovoid and sometimes multiple vesicular nuclei sometimes with prominent nucleoli here and here and they have very voluminous cytoplasm which is pink in color and sometimes clear and those are called lacunar cells and um, they are specific subtype of Reed-Sternberg cells or Hodgkin cells and Hodgkin cells and Reed-Sternberg cells are characteristic for a classical type of Hodgkin lymphoma um, but only in case of nodular, nodular sclerosis uh, we can identify these lacunar cells so it is called nodular sclerosis because we see nodules and in between the nodules there is fibrous bands so actual sclerosis these cells are almost always CD30 positive in most cases they are also CD15 positive and both antibodies are associated with specific type of positivity which is seen in the cytoplasmic membrane and also in the Golgi apparatus now this is an HNE stain and not immunohistochemistry so uh, <clears throat> so you don't see it here however it's a classical uh, membranous positivity with perinuclear dot Lacunar cells um, and also Hodgkin and Riesternberg cells and other subtypes of Hodgkin lymphoma are also positive for PAX5, which is a B marker. However, they are negative for leukocyte common antigen and usually also for CD20. So um, this is very unusual immunophenotype because lymphomas are normally uh, leukocyte common antigen positive and not always but commonly. And sometimes we can see also CD4 positive T cells which forms rosette um, around these Reed-Sternberg cells or, or lacunar cells so one T cell rosette can be seen here another one is here so all these cells are T cells or T lymphocytes now we also need to mention an important fact and that is that only these large atypical cells are neoplastic uh, in case of Hodgkin lymphoma they usually produce all sorts of cytokines and the other cells around are only reactive inflammatory cells so here we see mostly lymphocytes some of them are plasma cells with oval shape cytoplasm and <clears throat> eccentric nucleus let's have a look if we can find some plasma cell Well, maybe here but I'm not sure and we can also see granulocytes some neutrophils but most importantly these eosinophils so we see eosinophilic granules in the cytoplasm and glass-like or plum-like nuclei another eosinophil is here eosinophils are quite helpful in case of diagnosing Hodgkin lymphoma because sometimes it is quite hard to find the characteristic neoplastic cells well, especially in the case of uh, incipient interfollicular variant of Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, where these cells are quite rare but eosinophils are not specific they can be also seen in anaplastic large cell lymphoma which is a major differential diagnosis and they are also seen in case of longer hands histiocytosis and also other other types of um, lymph node diseases so nodular sclerosis Hodgkin's lymphoma is the most common subtype of classical Hodgkin lymphoma uh, they usually affect young patients and the most common localization is mediastinum mediastinum and cervical lymph nodes 
So um, let's say something about the main differential diagnosis. We already mentioned anaplastic large cell lymphoma. Um, so these large cells could easily be anaplastic large cell lymphoma cells. Um, this lymphoma could be ALK positive or ALK negative. And uh, the neoplastic cells are usually much more pleomorphic or anaplastic, hence the name, anaplastic large cell lymphomas. Uh, they classically have horseshoe shape and they are usually more numerous but not always. Um, <clears throat> uh, they are also CD30 positive which is unfortunate. So th the diagnosis can be tricky, but they are commonly uh, PAX5 negative, uh, which can help us in differential diagnosis. We also need to differentiate other subtypes of Hodgkin lymphoma, especially lymphocyte-rich classical Hodgkin's lymphoma. And this subtype also usually has nodular pattern. So this is the another important differential diagnosis. And other subtypes of classical Hodgkin's lymphoma is mixed cellularity and lymphocyte depleted. Um, one Hodgkin, Hodgkin's lymphoma stays apart, and that's nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. This, is, this type is not considered classical Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, and also immunohistochemistry profile is different. The malignant cells uh, are called LP cells. They look like popcorn and they are commonly leukocyte common antigen, antigen positive and CD20 positive uh, but CD30 negative so this subtype is closer to normal B cell lymphoma. Uh, we also need to differentiate primary mediastinal large B cell lymphoma with immunophenotype of neoplastic B cells and um, sometimes we can see uh, B cell lymphoma uh, intermediate in between diffuse large B cell lymphoma and classical Hodgkin lymphoma. And of course, simple diffuse large B cell lymphoma needs to be also differentiated um, because it can have Hodgkin like cells. So, that's a short review of uh, nodular sclerosis Hodgkin's lymphoma. Thanks for watching.